morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining today. My name's uh, Ellie and I'm a Social Obligations Officer at Western Power Distribution. Um, so I'm going to be talking to you today about WPD's social contract. Um, and this is something that we published for the first time last year. It was a result of nearly three years of um, engagement with stakeholders. But our plan is to update it annually with a report and an action plan. So the purpose of today is to get your views and for those to inform the development of our next situation, which will be coming later in the year. Um, some of you will have probably attended our events in the past, might have already provided feedback that's uh, informed previous stages of development. So it will also be great to hear how things have changed for you since we last spoke to you on the social contract. Um, but I just want to start with a kind of a brief overview of what it's all about. Um, so our social contract acts as a focal point for the business to um, deliver wider social and environmental benefits. And fundamentally, this gives strategic, uh, strategic direction to our ambition to do the right thing for our customers. So we've worked with stakeholders, as, as I said, to co-create the social contract. And they have um, driven us to be really ambitious and include commitments that go over and above our traditional activities, but which at its core um, strongly contributes to our social purpose. Um, and this engagement is now ongoing. So as I said, the purpose for today is to inform the development of our uh, next action plan. If we go on to the next slide, please. Um, so as we developed the social contract, there was a number of uh, different focus areas that were identified by stakeholders as key priorities. And that's kind of been developed into the three uh, broad focus areas shown on the, on the slide. So those are empowered communities, employer of choice and environmental steward. Um, and within those focus areas, we, as a company, are better able to identify ways that we can really bring um, all of our skills, expertise and resources as a business together to tackle um, the significant environmental and social challenges that are being faced in our communities. Um, and within this framework, we're also looking for opportunity, opportunities for collaboration, um, and ways to generate greater social value from our existing initiatives, as well as developing entirely new uh, activities and schemes. Um, so within those three key focus areas, we've set out 36 commitments in our first annual action plan, and delivery of this is already well underway. Uh, and we'll be looking, as I said, to sort of refresh that at the end of the year with some new actions, uh, which we are hoping to hear from you today. Next slide, please. So within these 36 commitments, there are a number of different activities. The uh, slide here is not an exhaustive list, but I think hopefully gives a good overview of the kind of things that we're doing. Um, so some of the activities include things like installing solar panels on school roofs. I'm gonna to touch on that a little more in a moment. Um, we're providing funding for community organizations. We are supporting our community energy schemes engaging with pupils on STEM uh, subjects, so that's science, technology, engineering, and maths. We are looking to improve uh, local biodiversity, not only at our own sites, but in the sort of wider community. Um, and we're also looking uh, to support social mobility. So we've recently launched a new traineeship with reduced academic requirements, and that's uh, an important part of our social contract too. Um, in the breakout rooms then, what I'd love to hear from you is what other actions you might expect to see as part of the social contract, anything that uh, we're not currently delivering, or if within these kind of broad focus areas, there are any specific activities or uh, I guess key causes that you think we should be supporting. Next slide, please. So um, as I just mentioned, one of the commitments we'll be delivering in the next five years as part of our social contract is to um, fund solar panels on 45 schools per year and with a specific focus on uh, targeting areas of high economic deprivation. So the, the real aim of this is to enable those schools and, and wider communities to participate in and benefit from uh, solar energy and a greener, smarter energy system. And in the past, stakeholders have told us that we're in a unique position to provide our customers with the sort of knowledge, tools, resources to access low carbon technologies as a kind of um, a neutral participant in the energy market. And so through the social contract, we want to maximize the additional benefits that we can bring uh, from that engagement with schools. So at the moment, we're undertaking a pilot of the project. And as part of that, 
we're trying to uh, understand what additional activities we might be able to include um, through our engagement with schools. So we're doing things like some biodiversity and habitat monitoring and improvement. Um, we're looking at STEM education and outreach, and we're also looking to raise awareness of our PSR. But it will be great to hear in the breakout rooms what other potential actions we could be doing to um, bring wider benefits to our schools and communities through this uh, kind of engagement. Um, and also what, what key um, channels or community groups, maybe from your own experience in the community or in your organization, we could involve and collaborate with on the delivery of this initiative. Next slide, please, thanks. Um, so we've also made a commitment to deliver an annual one million pound community matters fund. And this was born initially out of um, our response to the COVID-19 pandemic, but it's now an enduring fund and it's entirely funded by uh, shareholders. And we are distributing a million pounds of funding to local communities through um, kind of local grassroots organizations. And our Community Matters Fund aims to support organizations in the key areas which have been collaboratively uh, decided with stakeholders in, in previous sort of engagements which are vulnerability, safety, diversity, uh, low carbon and energy efficiency and STEM education. But I think this year in light of, uh, as uh, Rich and Alex have talked about the cost of living crisis and the real, um, the fuel poverty and um, issues that have come to the fore, we have focused the fund predominantly around this area and we've also increased it to 1.5 million. Um, so in our first phase of funding alone, we have supported 79 organisations to um, support 29,000 customers facing fuel poverty, and they've saved around £2.1 million, which I think just shows the kind of real impact of the fund. But in, in addition to providing this funding, we've also um, given training to those organisations to ensure that, as well as receiving funding, they have the kind of high quality um, and consistent support that uh, across the board um, and also to enable them to become referral partners for our priority services register. So I think one of the key things to talk about today would be how you'd like to see the scheme evolving, um, any suggestions you have for future uh, focus areas for the funding under those kind of key categories that I mentioned of um, safety, diversity, low carbon and energy efficiency, vulnerability and STEM education. And we'd also like to know what future support and partnerships we could offer uh, in addition to the funding. So I think we're going to go now into our breakout rooms and I look forward to hearing what the discussion brings. Thank you.